My name is Craig Portell. I'm an associate professor of medicine at University of Virginia. Yeah, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is uh, one of the more aggressive forms of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, it's really kind of a basket term, if you will, of multiple different types of um, more aggressive lymphomas. And it's really uh, defined by how it looks under the microscope. The cells look mostly large, as opposed to smaller of the more indolent lymphomas. Very rarely, um, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma will not have symptoms um, compared to other types of lymphomas where sometimes they present without any symptoms. Um, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma can present with pretty much almost anything, um, where it's fevers, chills, sweats, weight loss. Sometimes it can grow to the point where it's obstructing an organ or a drainage of an organ. Sometimes it can be infiltrated into an organ. I always say I'm never really surprised by how diffuse large B-cell lymphoma presents. Um, and um, it's really about getting the biopsy material to determine what, what you're dealing with to, to determine what it is. The first thing is uh, getting, a, getting a biopsy, and that can be, um, ideally we would try to take either a full lymph node out or a good chunk of tissue, it sounds kind of, kind of much, but you wanna, get, you wanna see what the lymphoma looks like on, in its home, in its space. Um, sometimes we can get by with just a cylinder of tissue, what we call a core needle biopsy. By aspirating, we disrupt the home that the lymphoma is in, and it's harder for the uh, pathologists, the, the doctors that make these diagnoses, to determine what type of lymphoma it is. Um, so usually we want to have uh, a full lymph node, if not a full lymph node, a core needle biopsy. There are really what I would consider three standards in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Um, the first being the, the old standard RCHOP, um, and that is, um, has been around since um, the early 90s with the addition of um, rituximab to this chemotherapy backbone called CHOP. Recently, there was a, a study that, that replaced the O in CHOP uh, called Oncovan or Vincristine with a newer drug called polituzumab vidotin and that is Pola R C H P or CHIP. That has shown some promise, uh, though it may be that that's more promising in certain subtypes of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. As, as I said earlier, there's many different types of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. We're getting better and better at determining um, the various different subtypes and identifying treatments for them, and a, a not quite personalized medicine, but maybe getting to that point. Pola R CHIP may be better than R CHOP in certain situations. The other treatment for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma frontline uh, is, a, is a regimen called EPOC uh, with rituximab, and that uh, EPOC is uh, kind of infusional um, CHOP, but it adds additional drug called etoposide. It's given over five days, and sometimes we use that in certain subtypes of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, like mediastinal diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. It's really understanding the biology of the disease better, I think. So the more we um, use genetic tools to um, identify these lymphomas uh, from a biology perspective. So if you really consider that lymphoma is a cancer of lymphocytes, and lymphocytes are immune-based cells, those immune cells have to, um, have to be trained to attack whatever they need to attack in the immune system. And that process, anywhere along that process of being trained or developed, can develop into a lymphoma. As we are learning more and more about these aggressive lymphomas, we've determined that various steps along the way um, can have actionable activity, actionable drugs that then we can use that information to tailor treatment for some patients' lymphomas. I think it's pretty early, to be honest with you, um, but that is kind of the promise and the hope uh, in the future. So the first um, thing to think about is how well did the first line treatment work? So if the first line treatment worked very well, we tend to consider additional rounds of chemotherapy and even going above the, the threshold of toxicity with chemotherapy um, to try to get the patients into a remission and hopefully cure. So that means getting the patients into remission with some form of chemotherapy and then using what I call high-dose chemotherapy with autologous stem cell rescue. It's also called an autologous stem cell transplant as a way to um, 
kill more lymphoma by going over the bone marrow toxicity. Essentially, we take out your stem cells, freeze them, give you massive doses of chemotherapy that would wipe out your bone marrow, then reintroduce your stem cells that have never seen that chemotherapy into your body to rescue you from the effects of the chemotherapy. So that can be a way to, um, to cure potentially chemotherapy sensitive patients who have relapsed um, more than a year from their prior treatment. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen all the time. Some patients do progress very quickly after um, the first treatment, whether that's CHOP, Polar, CHIP, or EPOC. Um, and those patients, uh, we tend to think a different mechanism is needed. We tend to go to CAR T-cell therapy at that point, um, and the, the product um, would depend on various different uh, uh, issues between the, the patient and the doctor. Um, but the CAR T-cell treatment, of course, is taking your endogenous T-cells out, your own T-cells out, genetically modifying them to attack the lymphoma uh, better. Um, and uh, can actually, our hope is, is that it will cure some uh, patients with lymphoma. It's been approved for, boy, probably four or five years now. Um, so we've been uh, using it quite more regularly um, as we go. And, and to be honest with you, um, we're expanding the, uh, the types of uh, lymphomas that we're, we're using CAR T-cell for. Probably the, the most exciting um, uh, new drugs are a class of drugs called bispecific antibodies. So these drugs don't work as CAR T-cell therapy, but they kind of mimic that. Essentially, it's um, using the T-cells that are in your body, not taking them out, not modifying them or anything, but having an antibody attached to them that then directs them to the lymphoma. It's a way to utilize your own uh, immune system to, to attack the lymphoma. The, the kind of the difference in the play between CAR T cell therapy and bispecific antibodies, you know, bispecific antibodies take multiple infusions, multiple treatments over a very long time. CAR T cell tends to be one big boom and you're, you're kind of do it and you're done. CAR T cell tends to be a bit more toxic with its side effects, whereas the, the bispecific antibodies tend to be less um, have less intense side effects. Well, I think the first thing we say is, you know, this is a cancer, however, it's curable. Um, and I think that's the first thing that people really need to know uh, when they're dealing with lymphoma, uh, particularly diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Not all lymphomas are curable, but diffuse large B cell lymphoma is one that we've had success rate. Um, it, not all diffuse large B cell lymphomas are curable, but at the first time I'm seeing a patient, we assume that every that they will be um, the cure will be possible. It's one thing that um, you know, as a new patient, that it's 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 important to hear that's the goal, right? What is the goal of what we're doing? And and if it is cure, then let's let's talk about it. That means I'm going to be more aggressive. We're going to talk more aggressively about your treatments and things. If it's not cure, then we're being less aggressive, but we're trying to focus on do we need to treat? What's the quality of life? How are we going to manage that? The LRF has a, so many different uh, educational resources on its website, um, and um, I often point patients to those resources. Um, there's also patient support groups, there are um, clinical trial um, lists that the LRF provides to patients, and then these uh, educational forums that have been very helpful for my patients, uh, both virtually and in person. Um, they've, they've really been um, very helpful for patients to understand their disease and get connected with folks that, um, that may have uh, good ideas about their treatments.